Hey guys, welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. Today's gonna be an interesting one. Uh, we're gonna be some, do some troubleshooting with Mike again. And I think I have an oil consumption problem. And those of you who caught the video from Autotopia, if you missed it, it's right there, check it out. Some really awesome driving shots of me in the GTO and some obvious smoke. So in between shifts or if I'm coasting and there's a lot of vacuum, there's some smoke going on. I suspect I have a bent valve in number three intake. So how do I know that? Well, those of you who have been around know that I had a catastrophic lifter failure last year and had to pull the engine and did all kinds of work to rebuild it and repaint it and had all kinds of fun. I did find a bent rod, not a bent rod, a bent push rod and I did not do um, the due diligence to check the matching valve and that's my fault. So we're going to see how to diagnose that today. So we're going to go ahead and do start simple, pull the plugs, see if we see any major oil contamination. Um, second thing would be a leak down test, walk you guys through how to do that. And third, maybe we'll use a bore scope down the intake. Don't know yet. So we'll see how it goes. So thanks for hanging out. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, let's have some fun. All right, guys, before we get started, I want to show you how I organize things. This is a really cool contraption by Crane Cams. And, and there's a whole bunch of different ones on the market. But it's a place to put all your valve train. So you can put uh, your lifters in here, your, your rods, whatever. I'm going to use it for the spark plugs. So um, it's labeled front. And the cool thing is there's a hole in the middle. So if you are doing like your um, changing your valve train out, you can actually take your air intake off and the, the stud goes right through there and you screw it on there. Mine happens to fit right on top, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the plugs and we'll be right back. Okay, there comes number three, the suspect. Huh, it, look, it looks fine to me. <laughs> so a leak down test, what we have to do is we have to get um, the cylinder in top dead center on the compression stroke. So top dead center on the compression stroke. And we, we took our spark plugs out already and we actually fill the cylinder with air. And you're going to need an air compressor that has... They can maintain more than 80 PSI. So we're going to put 75 PSI in the cylinder. And what's going to happen is air is going to leak through. It's called blow-by. And air might leak out of the exhaust valve or out the intake valve. And you monitor it. And it will drop in pressure. Every engine, it's normal. And we're going to go around each cylinder and see what the value is. So let me show you what the contraption looks like. All right, guys, this is what we're working with today. This is uh, my leak down tester. It's an OTC product. It's not super high end. It's not super low end either. I got it from Summit Racing. I'll leave a link down here. But basically what you do is you attach your air hose. So you have um, 80 PSI or more coming in. We adjust our valve to get to... 75 you can actually pick a number there's a chart that comes with the kit i'll show you in a second but i'm going to go with 75 psi and then we connect our hose to the cylinder and this in here and what happens is this will measure our leak down so it will maintain a certain pressure so you let it sit for like 30 seconds a minute and it will maintain a certain pressure and let's say it's around this range, let's call it 70. We can pull up the chart. Here's the chart, I don't know if you can read it, but on this side, is, we're using 75 PSI. And let's say we pulled 70. There's 70. Our leak down percentage would be 7%. Okay, clearly back at the engine, um, we are gonna start our measurement on number one. So we need to find top dead center. And to do that, if you guys know the trick, I've mentioned it in other videos, you put your thumb over the uh, number one spark plug hole, 
and you turn your crank until it starts pushing air out. Make sure you're in neutral. I don't know how many times I've tried to turn the crank, not one, wondering why the hell I can't turn the damn engine over. It's because it's still in gear. So smart. Um, so the cool thing is when you put your hose on, so here's the hose, it's attached to number one, we should be able to actually feel air come out of here or hear it. So here we go. You guys hear that? So I know I'm approaching top dead center on the compression stroke. And now we switch gears and look at the top dead center marking on the harmonic balancer so we get to top dead center. So I'll do that real quick. All right guys, so I have my hose connected to number one. I got my air inlet for my air compressor. And we just start cranking up the boost, so to speak. So we're gonna go to 75 on the left dial. So 75 is right there. And then this is where we get our reading. And I'm trying to get it not to glare for you. So we're at 72. Then you release your pressure. And take the hose off. And let's go write that down. All right, so 72 was our real reading. 72 PSI on our chart 72 it's right here so 4% leak down awesome so I'm gonna go through every cylinder now the reason I put this in firing order is to make it easier on us every top dead center on compression is 90 degrees from each other on the crank so you just have to turn the, put the hose on number eight, turn the crank 90 degrees, you're going to be at top dead center. Put the hose on this one, 90 degrees, top dead center. So if your harmonic balancer has 90 degree markings, you're in luck. If you don't, do the best you can to um, put a, a white mark or something every 90 degrees, and that'll help you out, make things a lot faster. So I'm going to go, ho go ahead and do the whole process. I'll write them all down. And remember... Seven and three are my curiosity points, right? Because I think I have a bent valve just from the bent push rod um, and number seven because of the crazy fouling we have on the plug. So I'll be right back with my measurements. All right, guys, here's what we came up with. Um, wow, look, four, four, five, three and a half, five, five, six, five, three which I suspected had a problem, is the best one. What in the hell? Um, seven, which has that dirty plug, is the worst, but by 1%, I had seven here because I measured it once at 70, and I measured it three more times at 70 and a half. That's why I changed, and that's one percentage. That is not a big deal. What you're looking for is a big difference. Like, let's say these are all... The way it is and then number seven read uh, 20 percent or 25 or something drastically different then it would lead you to go to do some more uh, further analysis and here's what could have happened what i thought had happened on number three if you have a bent valve your valve will not seat correctly in the head and air will get through there that's what i was trying to get after so now, and the, and the way you do that, frankly, is once you find your outlier, let's say we had a major leak, what we would do is we would listen for where the leak is. And you can listen through the intake manifold if it was on the like, intake side. Uh, if it's on the exhaust side, you can actually try and listen through the exhaust pipe. and Or if it's through the rings, like you've got a bad blow-by, you can actually li listen to where you fill your oil in to see if, you hear any hissing that's the next step but we're we don't, we're not there i mean this is not even worth troubleshooting so i think my next step is just uh, get the bore scope down into that 
intake runner to see if we can see the valves. I think that would be a fun experiment. I've never done that before. I just got this um, borescope from Amazon. So anyway, let's go give that a shot. All right, guys. So I took the carb off, and I actually stuck my borescope down here. This is actually the runner that goes to number seven. And right here is, I think, is the culprit. And I'll show you a couple pics. So check this picture out. This is the PCV valve hose. So this is crankcase ventilation. I don't know why it's plumbed over here. I think the, the guy originally built the motor, and I didn't think about it, and I kept it there. It should be plugged into the carburetor, which is like right here. So that gets dispersed amongst all the cylinders. And then check out this picture. So this picture is uh, the number seven valve. Look how caked that is. And I think it's from the oil coming from the PC valve from that other picture. So I think that's the root cause, my friends. All right, guys, here's the PCV valve with the hose. And a couple things to note. This is, I don't know if you can tell, all this oil is coming off of my hands. So there's definitely oil coming out of the PCV valve, which is probably somewhat normal. The other thing to note is see how this hose is swollen? This is not the proper hose to use. So it's also deteriorating, probably deteriorating, but swelling. Or it's got oil in it, resting in it. So you can't tell in the video, but it's definitely swollen in the middle. It's weird. So, and here's the fitting that goes in the intake manifold. So I'm going to get a plug, plug that intake manifold port. And if you're curious, on the back of your carburetor, or throttle body if you have fuel injection, there is a port right here. See it's plugged? That's where the PCV hose should go. Because then the fumes get dispersed amongst all cylinders, where this one was pumping it into number 7 only, where the EGR valve is supposed to go if your car is equipped with one. So... My fault for never noticing that. That was the original engine builder, Gen 1 of my engine. I broke that engine and I just took the manifold off, used the same manifold, not realizing I should have plumbed this over here. So, oh my gosh. Real quick, guys, what I'm going to is a fuel line. So it's fuel resistant. I don't know what that other hose was, but it didn't look good. So I reattached it to the PCV valve, and then I got a plug for the nipple that was on the back of the intake manifold. This is 3 8 NPT. That's this thread size here. So I'm going to use Teflon tape, and if you guys are using Teflon near oil, make sure it's this yellow stuff. This is for gasoline and petroleum products. So I'm going to wrap that, put it in the intake, and go from there. Alright guys, so here's what's going on in case you were wondering. I keep mentioning a PCV valve. This is it's what's called is a positive crankcase ventilation system where the valve is releasing pressure. Because what happens here when we get our spark driving our piston down, there's actually blow by, and we talked about the blow by earlier, gets through the rings and into the crankcase area. Those gases, some unburnt, some burnt, will can contaminate the oil. So the oil's down here. It can contaminate the oil and turn into sludge. No one wants that. Um, so that's why there's a PCV valve, typically right here on a Pontiac, on, on, on my engine. On a stock engine, it's actually up in the valve cover. You might see a, uh, like a, it looks like a breather, but it has a tube coming out and it comes to the air cleaner. That's, I think, the stock location. Anyone chime in if you know better than me, because it's been a long time since this engine's been stuck. So the hose was actually plumbed to where the EGR would go. And an EGR is an exhaust gas recirculation system. So on an emissions controlled car, those gases just get pumped back into the number seven, into the piston and get, and get reused again. Now, since the PCV valve was plumbed to that spot, Number seven was eating all this, including some oil, instead of being plumbed to the carburetor 
for the intake manifold to dispense it and share the love to all eight cylinders. So that's what we changed. We just replumbed it to the carb. Some engines that are really um, higher on power and compression will have an actual pump, an electric pump, that will evacuate said gases. And that actually increases performance because you have no back pressure against the piston. Because this is building up with pressure and the piston is trying to come down. This pressure is going up. You actually can relieve a lot of stress that way. So I'm optimistic that this new valve, just this plumbing alone, will solve a lot of the problems I was having. Because num that number seven plug being fouled and everything. So let's see what happens. Oh, crisis averted. Oh my gosh, thank God it wasn't a bent valve. So I went ahead and put a new plug in, number seven, uh, replumbed that PCV valve to go to the carburetor so we can spread the love so all eight cylinders get some nice PCV vapor and probably some oil too, frankly. So we won't know for another 100 miles or so, which is like a tank of gas. I'll pull the carburetor again just to see how much oil is coming through that PCV line because if oil's coming through, that's not good either we want to make sure that somehow gets stopped so we can put like an oil separator in or something to stop that oil from coming into the carburetor we don't want that to happen either <sighs> that's fun of the fun of the hobby so thanks for hanging out guys subscribe if you haven't and you guys know the drill building fast driving faster see ya